Hello, everybody. Welcome to Talk About Houses. I am Todd. I am Juana. I am the smart one. And apparently, I'm the pretty one. She is the pretty one. <laughs> I am in Mensa. It is a high IQ society. I do not believe you are in Mensa. So, and well, you're good looking, and I look like this. So <laughs> that's pretty much how we how this works. Yep. Okay. Now that we've got that out of the way, okay, uh, we are going to do this fun video because we got data, which I ripped off the internet from a Facebook <laughs> post. This is the appreciation of the top 20 cities in the U.S. Mm -hmm. since March of 2020. Mm -hmm. so you're Basically the pandemic. That's the That was the thing. It, lockdown started and everything changed. So you're basically spreading propaganda. Propaganda, but it's okay. not propaganda because basically, <laughs> and we don't know if this is median or per square foot or indexed, but we have some percentages and we're going to talk about them. What I really like, so I'll put up the chart and then we'll talk about it. So it's got the top 20 cities. It's in alphabetical order, which is goofy because normally they would just put the highest to lowest and you could go down, but now you have to look at every one. And then Washington, D.C. can't really see because there's something blocking it, but it's 29.9%. It's about 30%. National average, 41.8%. Um, you can see that there. Uh, and so here's here's some interesting stats. Um, the highest two cities are Tampa and Miami, 63%. Now, the doing the decimal percent, I wouldn't have done that. Like I would have taken Cleveland, 38.9, just to 39%. Because mm -hmm. there's enough variation in this. Because remember, if it's not indexed, if it's median, then that, that can be off a couple percent, right? Well, but by having the decimals in place, it lends it a certain air of um, veracity? I think so. Um, now you've got San Francisco, 27.6%. That's kind of a surprise because um, it was down for a while. Mm -hmm. But in the home, home, I've talked to people buying in the San Francisco area and they're like, no, home prices are going up. They're having to compete with homes disappear from the market really quick again. Right, but again, that has to do with supply and demand. I mean, people who are who have been uh, in these homes and they were expensive homes and they still are expensive homes. They've, they've refinanced them. They can afford them. Uh, they're comfortable. They still have jobs in the area. So they're not selling. Uh, the people who wanted to sell and get out of Dodge, they did that a few years ago. So now the people that are left are the people that are, are there for, um, for the duration. The other trend that's interesting is South. Southern Sunbelt cities have done well. Phoenix, 54%. Uh, you got Atlanta at fifty percent, Dallas at fifty percent, um, Charlotte fifty four percent. Right, that's in North Carolina, and then of course Vegas thirty seven point two percent, which is not bad. Not bad. But we're you know below the national average for appreciation, but still that means we have more room to go. We have more potential for price increases. Right. So our price increases, uh, you know, are considering the amount of people moving in uh, versus the, the amount of people moving out versus, and then also considering. All the new growth that is uh, planned for the next three to five years with everything that's happening in Vegas, it's likely that we'll have some appreciation. Yeah, the the growth in Vegas is pretty – it's probably, it'll probably be the biggest three to five-year growth we've ever had for the economy, mm -hmm. not necessarily for – like number of homes built or anything like that, because that's certainly we're not we're never going to break the records of two thousand three, four, five, six, where home builders were just building like you know crazy. But you know we've got a professional baseball team coming. They're talking about a major league soccer team. They're talking about an NBA team. We just built the sphere, mm -hmm. which is that round thing with all the lights on it that you know they can make it look like different things. It's the largest screen outdoor screen in the world. Mm -hmm. Then there, we have two hotels that will be opening up um, and a lot of other – the Formula One racing and stuff is coming. So our economy is, is tourism, but tourism and leisure is growing at the highest rate of anything in the nation right now, like higher than tech, higher than automobile industry. Any industry is growing. Travel and leisure is right now growing and Vegas is sort of benefiting from that. Right. Yeah, and that, you know, Vegas is also seeing this um, this whole new trend of luxury homes being built. Um, and what's different is that the luxury there are a number of builders uh, that are building spec luxury homes, which means that uh, they are sort of custom in the sense that they are somewhat unique. But these are homes for which um, there is not a buyer when they get started on the home. 
and the buyer comes along later. So I think that's an interesting thing. And these are not homes that are, um, these are homes that are luxury homes almost by any definition because these homes are anywhere between five and $10 million. So they're not, you know, your run of the mill uh, track homes. So I don't care what market you're in, five to $10 million is probably a good chunk of money. You know a lot about more for that uh, than I do. Because yeah. I think you just today didn't you go see a bunch of luxury homes? We did new, uh, your new new listings from yeah. your yeah we did your thing. But we do that every week. You do that every week. Yeah. Okay, so what do you guys think about the next three years? Right, it's sometimes it's kind of like I don't think we're going to see these numbers three years from now. No, I don't think we're going to say oh Atlanta went up fifty percent again because then now Atlanta's up you know double in six years, but. Um, It'd be interesting to see what happens, you know, especially I think in some of these cities, San Diego, I think San Diego still, you know, it's just anecdotally, there's very few, I have friends who are agents there. I know a lot about the market. There's very little inventory. I was looking at Point Loma and the whole, Point Loma is massive. It's got like 25,000 houses on it. And there were like 30 houses for sale. In any price range. And I'm like, seriously? Right. So, so if you want a house, you're stuck with one of the 25 or something that's available. Right. I mean, I think that um, the lack of inventory is going to dominate the conversation and what we see in the marketplace as far as pricing for a long time. You know, I think that's kind of where we are. I mean, look, we haven't been building homes at the pace that we've needed to build homes for a long time. And we're at that point where this is making a big difference, especially when you combine it with the low interest rates that people have on their on their mortgages and they don't want to let those go. So I think that th these are this is a combination that is going to be hard to break out of. It's going to take a long time. Here's the problem. This is what I'm saying. Historically, there's two things that cause a normal supply of homes to come on the market for people to buy. One is foreclosures. One, and I know a lot about that because mm -hmm. we've sold thousands of foreclosures. There are no, for, literally there are no foreclosures. You might as well be zero. In Vegas, we have one every three days on average. We're talking about an actual foreclosure sale. Um, the number of 90 day lates is the lowest it's been since they started measuring it in 1957. So there's no future foreclosures. They're, we're not gonna get any new Im inventory from people being foreclosed on. The second is people moving. The problem is people are moving, but they're not selling. Because what they used to do is they used to they used to take their 10% loan and say, oh, I'm going to move, so I'll extinguish that loan and go buy the next house. Now the interest rates are down to 8.5%. Mm -hmm. And then they would do 8.5% and, and they would get a 6.5%. And then they would say, oh, interest rates are 5. That's crazy low. They'll never be below 5 ever. And they would sell the house to 6.5 and get a 5. And now we have people with 1.9% you know, interest rates on a 15-year fixed that are like, I'm never selling this house. I'll It'll just be a rental and I'll go buy another house, right? So I think that's a problem is I think people are moving. They're buying a house, but they're saying, oh, I, I have another house, but we're not selling I'm, or I'm not selling it. Right. I think that's the problem right now. Right. And, you know, traditionally when people moved out of the area, so let's say that you were going from Las Vegas to Chicago, okay? Uh, you know, you would sell your Las Vegas home, right? Because you're going all the way to Chicago. But, you know, kind of to your point, people are even people moving out of state they're not all selling i mean it used to be very rare that people didn't sell when they left the state and now they're really having to think long and hard i mean i know people who have moved uh you know out of state and they've kept their properties and i think that's yeah. really interesting um and there's more and more of that. And, and we've seen in the comments, you guys have mentioned the same thing that, that we've been saying, which is when a loved one passes away, uh, the heirs are not selling the property. They're keeping it as a rental. So there's this whole thing of people understanding the value of the property uh, as far as an investment, as far as income, as far as appreciation. I think people have become more financially literate in that way. And they're seeing that benefit and they're doing what they can to hang on to that investment. Yeah, I agree. I, I mean, I don't think interest rates going down are really going to, I thought we talked about that interest rates go down. 
more homes that hit the market and all that. I, I don't know that that's actually going to happen. Right. So we'll see. What do you think? What do you think is going to happen? What does your crystal ball say? Uh, leave us comments. We'd like to hear from you. Please remember to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the video, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye. Bye.